Hey guys, Will Robinson here from Robinson's Auto. Welcome back. Today I got a 2000 Plymouth Neon. The complaint is that she came out, went to turn the key on, she had no accessories. Went to turn it to start, there was no restriction. You're supposed to have a little bit of spring tension when you put it in the start position, that way it springs back off. After you release it, none of that was happening. There was power to the battery. I guess they tried jumping it and it didn't make a difference. I believe the problem lies somewhere in the in the ignition switch itself. The ignition switch is the electrical portion of the ignition. Where you put your key is actually a lock cylinder. A lot of people get that confused, call it the ignition switch, but it is in series with the switch, so you can call it what you will. But uh, I'm going to start by removing the, the lock cylinder, seeing if anything's broken in that mechanism, and then I'll move on to the ignition switch itself. To remove the lock cylinder on these, you don't even have to remove the covers. There's actually a little access hole. I'll give you a quick shot of that in a moment. But uh, when I uh, get to the ignition switch portion of the job, I'm going to have to remove the covers. In addition, I'm going to have to, I don't really have to remove the multifunction switch. I can just take the bolts out and move it up and out of the way. But I'm going to unplug it just to give you guys an exploded view for, uh, for demonstration purposes. So uh, if you have to remove and replace a multifunction switch, this video. We'll show you how to do that as well. So um, let's move on to uh, diagnosing it. I'll give you a shot on how to remove that cylinder. Some of the tools you're going to need for this job, if it is in the electrical portion of the switch, you're going to need a, a Phillips head screwdriver, a nut driver. I think it's a T10 security bit. A security bit is a, a bit with a hole in the center of it. And um, they put a little tab inside the Torx hole keep you from using a regular standard bit so people don't steal parts but uh, that's a it's a T10 security bit and a Phillips set screwdriver should get the job done all right let's get started you come down here under the steering column you'll see this the holes for your screws and then you have this one extra hole here well, up in there there's a little when you put the ignition switch to start there's a little tabby push up. Let me show you. Whenever you're doing anything with the steering column, you always want to disconnect the battery. So just go out there and disconnect the negative side of the battery. Install your key, turn it to start. Open to that little hole. Find that tab, push up on it. Then you can pull your lock cylinder out. That's all there is to it. As you can see, the switch itself looks good. That's actually really beefy, so I, I didn't think there was anything going on there. So the, the problem must lie, must lie somewhere in the portion of the electronic part itself. So I'm going to have to lower these covers. Alright, uh, next you want to come over here. You see these two fasteners here that hold down the multifunction switch? We're going to want to remove that so I can lift this switch up and out of the way. Once you got the two screws removed, you got two electrical connections you want to unplug. You got one here. And you got one back here. Alright, unplug them. Okay, once you have your two screws out, your uh, wire connections unplugged. And you can just proceed to taking and uh, lifting your uh, your multifunction switch up and out of the way. Okay, now that you got the multifunction switch out of the way, you come over to this side here, and this is your ignition switch. This is the electrical portion of the switch. And right there is that uh, T10 security bit that you're going to need for that screw. And uh, take and unplug that wire connection first, remove that screw, and then we'll go from there. Alright guys, one thing I just noticed when I went to remove this screw, you can't really get a straight on shot, no matter where you put the column. So what you're going to have to do is uh, just get yourself the security bit itself and uh, put a wrench on it or a pair of pliers just to break it loose and then you can take it out with your fingers. Okay, once you have that out, you can proceed to uh, removing your ignition switch. And as you can see, there's the problem. You 
see that mechanism's broke. So the switch itself is actually good, but that aluminum that aluminum piece is broke. So let me see what I got to do to uh, repair that. Well, of course, if the problem just laid in the ignition switch or in the lock cylinder itself, you would have just stopped at that process. But since I got to go further, I'm going to start by removing uh, these two T10 torque security torque screws. Okay, guys, once you have them two screws removed, take and lower this piece. You'll see that whole mechanism will drop out. There's a little spring in there. And, uh, there it is. I'm just gonna go down to the local junkyard. I got a U pull it place close by, a hair's U pull it. So I'm just gonna go yank one out of the car and uh, and fix this one. I'm not sure if you could buy this piece by itself, but if you have to remove this whole aluminum housing with this mechanism, it really doesn't seem like it's that hard. I'll just come up here. And as you see, you got this one strap. We use this two security torque bits as well. I see your clock springs clips onto that housing. You probably just remove them two clamps or you probably just remove that clamp undo your clips and uh, remove that whole housing. But uh, for this one I'm just going to go down to the local yard and pick up that mechanism because that's something that usually doesn't go bad so I don't mind putting a used one of them in. If it was the switch itself I would definitely go new. But since it's just that mechanism, I'll, uh, I'll go get a used one. Here's a shot of it. As you can see, it's just an aluminum piece. It's not very heavy. And that's what broke. So, uh, yeah, I'm not 100% sure if you could pick one of these up at the parts store. You might be able to. I don't see why not. You know, if you take it out, you should be able to find it somewhere. So, uh, alright, let me go get the part and I'll, I'll be back. Just got back from the yard, got the new part. As you can see, it's pretty much identical. Except for this one has a complete ledge here. And that one's shaped a little bit different, but the, they start and stop at the same spot and pretty much do the same, same job. You can see where that one was broke. And how, the, how it's supposed to look. And, uh, all right, let's install it. Okay, once you got that tight. Come over here and reinstall your lock cylinder. Let's see how that works on the other side. You see that mechanism there? As you see it turns with the key. I'm in the off position. Let's install the ignition switch. As you can see, I got that piece out of there. So uh, let's reinstall. What I did, I found it to be easier. I turned it all the way into the uh, all the way back position. We usually just turn it on just to listen to the radio. And I just turned the switch all the way to the back as far as it would go. And then I slid it on, and you know it was lined up because it slid right in and popped. All right, now reinstall your fastener and then plug it in. Now here's another thing I think I failed to mention. When you unplug these clips early on, there's a little red tab here. It's like a safety lock. You just push that forward and then you can push in your in your clip like normal and unplug it. So uh, yeah, you're gonna have to push them back before you could uh, unplug it. So now I got the ignition switch back on. It's mounted up, got the fastener. The electrical connections plugged in, locks locked back in. Now I can proceed on to installing the multifunction switch. Alright guys, I just want before I install the multifunction switch, I just want to come over here and uh, 
test out this lock cylinder. I don't have the battery hooked up, but like I said before, when you would go to the start position, it was just free floating. So let's see what it does now. It springs right back the way it's supposed to. So that's telling me everything's getting through to the ignition switch portion. So uh, we should be good to go there. So let's install the multifunction switch and, uh, and the covers, and then we'll test it out. Install your fasteners. Now we got everything reinstalled. I went over everything twice. Got the battery all hooked back up. Let's uh, test it out and see what it does. That's a good sign. Got all my accessories back. And uh, she started up. So that's all it was, guys. I could uh, proceed to taking the plastic off the windows and uh, put them up as well. Alright, guys, there it is. Wasn't all that bad of a job, all in all. Made pretty good time on it. Found the problem, got the part, reinstalled it, fixed it, and she should be good to go for a while. And uh, like always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. If you learned anything, I always ask that you subscribe and uh, feel free to frame request, comment, you know, anything. I'm here for you guys, you know. So stay tuned. Till next time, guys. Catch you later.